Hello, uh, good afternoon everyone. So in this talk, uh, I am going to cover uh, about uh, CIP, uh, its uh, different work groups and the work we are doing especially in as part of security work group. Plus there will be some highlights and updates from other work groups and how CIP security work group and other uh, work groups are uh, working together uh, for achieving some targets. So let's see. Yeah, so the main agenda points would be uh, discussing about uh, CIP work groups and IEC 62443 activities in CIP. Uh, we have done some of the activities, uh, we have completed, some are in progress. And then uh, achieving uh, IEC 62043 compliance for CIP. And for this, uh, we have some challenges from open source uh, software perspective, where uh, there are some uh, challenges in terms of uh, development processes and some other stuff. So we will see some details. And then uh, we are just reusing all the open source component to achieve uh, this compliance without uh, developing any new components. So the idea is basically to just reuse already available components and achieve this compliance. And then as part of this story, we have we are also developing IC62 level 43 uh, layer, which has security packages and it is part of ESR CIP core. And this also has a uh, lot of uh, other features to be added in uh, future. So uh, the motivation uh, behind uh, CIP is always to collaborate with other open source projects and communities, uh, work closely with upstream communities, uh, for example, uh, reproducible builds and similarly uh, other uh, upstream communities and then contributing back to uh, open source community. So this is how we collaborate with other communities and we work together to solve uh, problems. And uh, CIP has uh, upstream first policy. So any issues CIP users find, they can directly report to uh, upstream or in fact to CIP as well. And finally, when the, some solution is found, it has to be first upstreamed and then it comes back to CIP and to CIP users. So the main motivation behind uh, CIP is to collaborate in open source way and solve uh, common problems all the players in the industry they are facing. So the key challenges basically which are common across the industry is having a industrial grade uh, software which can be very reliable and functionally safe and it can have real time capabilities and then sustainability where uh, the product can be used very for very long uh, duration and uh, backward compatibility and supporting uh, standards like uh, IEC and maybe other uh, security standards it would be from different domain and then security and vulnerability management firmware update. So these are the key uh, challenges and uh, CIP basically focuses on these uh, areas to address these key challenges and uh, then develop uh, some uh, software which can uh, address these key challenges. So to uh, address these key challenges, so basically uh, in CIP, we call it open source base layer, which consists of uh, CIP core packages and CIP kernel. So as part of CIP kernel, uh, CIP has its own uh, kernel maintainers team who maintains CIP kernel and uh, periodically a uh, specific uh, uh, long term supported kernel is selected and then it is further maintained for 10 plus years. So recently uh, kernel 5.10 was selected for this maintenance. And on top of that, uh, we have CIP core package 
which currently uh, uh, primarily supported by ESER CIP core project, which develops reference images for multiple architectures. And there are, uh, there are already uh, multiple uh, reference hardware supported by CIP based on uh, x86, ARM64, ARM HF. Yeah, and uh, those architectures uh, like continuously we are adding up based on the CIP members request. We have certain framework to uh, uh, to accept our new reference hardware and uh, that way it is uh, accepted. Sorry. So, so the main focus is uh, open, uh, developing uh, open source based layer and then maintaining it uh, for long time. So as CIP platform, basically the uh, main main objective is to build and maintain a pre-production base layer, open source base layer, which is having a industrial uh, grade quality, which can be used in products which where industry runs on those kind of products. And uh, CIP members and other users can uh, use this uh, layer and they can implement uh, commercial products using this layer. CIP also maintains its own uh, preempt RT forked kernel, uh, which is uh, further like collaborated with the uh, uh, RT community, and it's uh, being used in several uh, CIP uh, products, CIP based uh, products. And then uh, uh, there are multiple reference hardware supported by CIP, uh, and currently. Basically, we keep doing uh, testing on these uh, reference hardwares for, uh, for all the supported kernels whenever some updates are there. So then further, this testing is done through Lava framework and those test uh, results are uh, updated through kernel CI and uh, providing super long term support for 10 plus years is one of the key feature of CAP platform. Now briefly I will touch upon uh, CIP workgroups. So in CIP we have a governance structure where we have governing board uh, TSC and then further there are multiple workgroups who focus on specific areas. So we are basically from uh, CIP uh, security workgroup uh, and focusing uh, currently in IC uh, 6243 compliance. Security workgroup members closely work with CIP core, uh, CIP kernel, and CIP testing and other workgroup members to uh, achieve those requirements, compliance requirements, as well as uh, how to uh, update for security and how to support vulnerability and uh, sharing those uh, vulnerability updates regularly with the uh, CIP users. And that way, uh, regularly, these uh, workgroups keep meeting and keep working. Then we have CIP core work group who is responsible mainly for uh, uh, creating the reference images and the key goals basically to uh, maintain CIP core package for uh, long term and provide uh, reference implementation uh, which is based on CIP core packages and this uh, keeps enhancing, I mean, keeps uh, increasing the number of packages. So any CIP member company can propose to add additional packages based on certain criteria. And uh, similarly, other work groups can propose to uh, adopt additional packages. And then CIP uh, core work group basically does some investigation and uh, understands how well the package is maintained and accordingly it is either selected or rejected. So we have a certain process called package proposal, which is followed for that. So this is how our CIP core package uh, are selected and then reference images are built. So I will go to the next slide, which explains about the package proposal, package selection process in CIP. So this can be done by any CIP member who wants to have additional packages. For example, some members wants to have OpenSSL, some member wants to have some uh, backup related uh, package or additional features. So those packages are first uh, checked 
how well they are maintained, how, how many open CV is or open issues are there and based on that uh, CIP core uh, work group uh, decides whether to accept that package or reject that and once it is accepted then it is further maintained. In CIP core work group there have been several activities recently like uh, collaboration with the reproducible build team to make CIP uh, images reproducible and as part of that we solved some problems like removing depth cache files and removing slash temp files and fixing change log uh, timestamp problems. These were creating problems to make a CIP images reproducible. So these problems are solved but still there are few more things to solve to make uh, CIP images reproducible. Uh, as part of this we are also collaborating with the uh, reproducible build teams and we are getting inputs from them. So this activity is uh, one of the main activity and it will continue. Uh, recently uh, CIP core started supporting Debian bullseye based reference images and uh, supported uh, uh, ARM64, uh, Camo ARM64 uh, secure boot. I think this was one of the main topic in uh, previous CIP sessions. And then adding IC layer to adopt additional packages which are proposed by a security work group. So these are uh, some of the recent activities CIP core members have been working on. And uh, in future there will be further activities which include uh, development as well as defining policies for, uh, for the compliance of IEC 62443 and uh, uh, yeah, achieve this IEC 62443 compliance and then uh, there are some issues still to be solved for reproducible build which are like uh, LD config cache files and uh, root FS files timestamps. So these are still some of the problems to be solved to make CIP images reproducible. So this is in the roadmap and then uh, further supporting and uh, discussing next version of Debian bookworm and uh, working for creating the ref reference images for this. And then uh, as part of security work group currently the main focus area is uh, to do the compliance and for IEC 62443. So key goals are basically to uh, so investigate IEC 62443 4-1 and 4-2. So this is this has been done and working with certification body so that uh, some of the work we already did we'll see more details in uh, coming slides and then identifying certain packages which we already did some of the packages and we created IC layer and then uh, as part of the process making the proposal and making those packages part of the CIP core. Uh, we are also discussing uh, other initiatives to start in CIP security work group including uh, investigation of additional security standards like NIST. Uh, some part of it we already did to meet some of the IC requirements and uh, identifying security hard hardening practices so we can achieve some of the IC requirements as well as we can improve the security in IC, uh, CIP images and uh, collaborate with other security work groups to get more inputs and uh, to engage with them to bring those, uh, uh, those strength to CIP. So this is how uh, various uh, like multiple uh, work groups work together in CIP like uh, CIP security work group we uh, investigate some of the packages to meet IC requirements and then we discuss with certification body and then we uh, discuss with CIP core, CIP kernel and uh, then we decide whether the package is suitable or we should make some other choice. And finally this decision in this uh, process CIP TSC members also involved to make the final decision for some of the things and that's how uh, this overall uh, process works and that's how we operate and we regularly meet uh, like security work group, CIP core members 
and CIP Kernel Workgroup members, we regularly meet bi-weekly and we discuss upon the current issues, current uh, activities, uh, future activities and uh, CIP in uh, TSC meetings, we discuss about uh, each workgroup progress and uh, future roadmaps and plannings. In CIP security uh, work group, uh, we added multiple security packages as part of uh, IEC compliance and uh, they are part of IEC layer. Uh, so recently we have added some packages related to Google multi-factor authentication and we are discussing to add some of the packages for supporting backup requirements and uh, data, uh, data at rest encryption requirement. And then uh, in parallel, we are working with the uh, IEC certification body for completing the uh, gap assessment action items and then going for uh, final assessment. So as of now, the plan is uh, by end of this year, CIP will go for uh, final uh, uh, certification by end of this year and uh, then we will be completing the uh, assessment for uh, uh, assessment based on the current software stack. So, most likely currently we are having Debian uh, Bullseye and CIP kernel 5.10 that is the most probable candidate for the assessment. And next we are uh, preparing for final assessment to uh, uh, to complete the final assessment, we have to work with certification body and understand the current status of the items we already completed and the processes we have. So we found in our investigation there are few few things already available uh, from Debian and from Upstream. So for example, some of the packages Upstream developers already do static code analysis. Then uh, from Debian security, uh, Tracker we found there are some security related processes uh, required by IEC 6244-1 uh, which are also like uh, helpful to meet uh, some of the requirements. And then once this is done then uh, CIP will publish the reports, guidelines as well as uh, additional packages requirement so that uh, CIP users can utilize that and go for the uh, final assessment for their end products. So this will be this would be the next focus for CIP security uh, work group. Uh, now as part of uh, uh, security work group, uh, our mission is basically to provide a validated platform and guidelines and evidence uh, for CIP users and uh, also uh, for meeting the compliance requirements, do the testing and evaluation. So these artifacts, this information can be reused by CIP users to easily achieve uh, the compliance to IEC as well as uh, it will reduce uh, the significant, uh, it will significantly reduce the effort for IEC compliance and uh, they can reuse the guidelines and uh, fill the gaps, whatever, uh, whatever uh, requirements cannot be met in CIP being a platform they should be met by CIP and product. So usually uh, for any product uh, to get the IC certification, these are, these are the uh, top level, sorry, top level steps where uh, product team has to investigate about uh, IC standards and for that uh, from CIP they can get a lot of reference uh, material documents and that can be reused and then working with certification body. So again, this can be reused from CIP and then adding capabilities. So it depends, a lot of things depends upon the end product requirements, but uh, several requirements are already achieved through uh, CIP. So they can be reused by uh, CIP users. Uh, such as uh, IEC layer is one of the one of the layer where multiple requirements are met by adding those packages. So CIP users can use those capabilities and build upon those capabilities uh, to 
meet uh, uh, end product uh, requirements. So this uh, IC related activities we started uh, some time back and we already completed uh, lots of activities doing the investigation of IC uh, 4 dash 1 and 4 dash 2 and then working with certification body uh, for identifying the gaps in current capabilities of CIP and current processes which we follow and uh, uh, after doing the gap, anal gap analysis there were few gaps identified and uh, most of the gaps we have covered by adding additional capabilities plus additional process documentation those things so that's already available for anyone to look at it and uh, so basically after this the final step is to go for final assessment uh, with the some certification body and we are in the final stage uh, soon uh, we will be engaging with some certification body for uh, final assessment so during this investigation uh, we encountered there are still lots of gaps in terms of uh, if some open source based uh, product wants to achieve a certain uh, IEC kind of uh, uh, compliance so for example uh, development environment security is one of the challenge from open source perspective because in controlling uh, the development environment in open source is uh, quite difficult uh, we never know the kind of develop uh, kind of uh, environment being used by individual developers how it is controlled how it is secured what kind of security is applied so this is one of the challenges uh, to use open source uh, components uh, for getting some compliance then uh, it ic also expects uh, several secure design principle or uh, related requirements so how the component what was designed uh, how secure are the interfaces how it will make sure all the authentication or all the identification kind of requirements or any data flow is always protected so this is also one of the thing uh, which is uh, challenging to uh, achieve and then assessing and addressing security issues is something like uh, it's partially already being done as part of uh, Debian security uh, team so for each security issues uh, vulnerability when it is reported it is expected that it should be evaluated for its uh, side effects and uh, uh, like uh, what will be the issues uh, in different products if that issue remains open and how immediately it should be fixed whether it is applicable or not so this kind of analysis has to be performed by some uh, someone uh, so uh, this is currently being done by uh, some of the Debian security teams so we are currently planning to just reuse that and then uh, it also expects doing threat modeling for components some components uh, which might be vulnerable or which are coming from let's say third parties so again this is some of the challenging things in open source where most of the components we can say it comes from uh, third parties or other uh, developers upstream developers so identifying such components and doing the threat analysis uh, and identifying those paths where it can be vulnerable and uh, then making sure so it's a uh, uh, like uh, quite challenging to do such things in open source based uh, components and then uh, another thing is security update so how frequently updates are provided by the components and how it is made sure it is always up to date so these are some of the challenges which we found uh, during investigate uh, when we were doing the investigation for IC requirements. So we have worked on them and we also had discussion with certification body how we can address uh, from open source uh, perspective. So they also don't know many things because uh, many open source based components have not gone through such kind of certifications so they also worked and they also did some brainstorming so for different things for example development environment security 
uh, basically we we defined as part of CIP we defined certain policies to restrict the merge privilege so anyone cannot just uh, uh, push the code so this is how we uh, up to certain level we control the development environment and of course there are some assumptions like inherently the upstream developers are protecting their own development environment and then uh, secure design principle related uh, requirements are uh, like not easy to meet but uh, as an alternate option it was suggested by certification body that uh, if we make sure that uh, static code analysis or the uh, reviews are done in such a way that uh, all the uh, components which might be risky are properly analyzed. So this we found many components already doing uh, this static code analysis in upstream. Then similarly for ad assessing and addressing security issues, we found uh, Debian security tracker already has uh, several policies and some of them are quite well documented but still uh, there are gaps probably uh, those need to be filled so that uh, lots of such uh, requirements can be met. They, they are not just to meet certain policies or uh, certain guidelines, they are just also equally important uh, to address the security concerns. So in CIP, basically we are using uh, Debiscan uh, for tracking CVEs and in CIP kernel, it's supported since long time and regularly CIP uh, kernel workgroup members share the CV updates uh, in CIP dev mailing list. So that's how CIP users get the updates and this is how this requirement is met because as part of CVE, uh, multiple uh, such analysis of assessing and addressing security issues is already done. So this is how uh, partially it is met. And then for threat modeling, we did some threat modeling how currently uh, CIP works and uh, how our uh, CIP GitLab repositories are protected and how we are making sure we have only couple of members, those, uh, those, those are active members, they have the merge privileges, N nothing like uh, anyone can uh, push the code. And similarly for security update management, we provide reference implementation as part of uh, CIP, but of course, uh, the actual implementation has to be done by uh, CIP users. It is just a reference implementation. It can be used by CIP users to further enhance it and customize based on the uh, product requirement. So after this uh, analysis, we started working on creating IC layer. And uh, as part of that, uh, as we can see here, uh, anyone can try this uh, IC layer uh, by doing a git clone of ESA CIP core and then creating a security image and then we can currently run in camo and soon we are planning to support this on real hardwares and then it can be tried on real hardware. So this is a list of security packages currently we have already added to enhance the security capabilities and this list will uh, further increase as we progress in the in investigation and uh, as we discuss with the certification body. So anyone interested can try this uh, IC layer. And recently we have also uh, done some documentation and some additional security configuration, which can help you uh, CIP users to further customize it. And here, uh, we have another uh, GitLab repository where we are maintaining all our IEC uh, documents. We, all the documents, whatever we are creating, they are maintained in markup format so that uh, it's easier to maintain, easier to uh, customize. And uh, uh, here we are following the process like any uh, CIP users or CIP developers uh, create the document, then it is reviewed and uh, then it is merged. So all the documents are uh, kept in this repository and this is the format we decided to use for all further documents. So what all uh, documents will be created in future, they will be in the same format. 
So as I explained partially earlier, uh, like uh, in CIP, we do CVE handling. This is also one of the IC requirement to uh, have the CIP, uh, sorry, CVEs updates, provide CV updates to CIP users. So in CIP kernel, uh, currently through this uh, repository, anyone can see the details. And for CIP core, the work is currently in progress. Partially, uh, uh, there was some implementation using uh, Debian Dabiscan, but still this work is in progress. And uh, in future, we would be having uh, this as well. So then we will have a consolidated list of CVs which will be shared with CIP users and accordingly they can decide uh, to update or to upgrade the packages to further enhance the security. So the one of the main motive of uh, CIP is also to just reuse, don't develop any new things. So we are just reusing uh, open source components uh, without modifying anything. Of course, when we are finding certain issues, we contact to respect to upstream developer and we work with them uh, to fix those issues. So this is how we work and uh, uh, in IEC also we are to, to achieve IEC compliance also we are just using all the open source components in IEC layer. So how CIP users would benefit uh, from the compliance? Uh, we, we are still in the uh, process of uh, quantifying it, how we can quantify like what kind of actual percentage uh, of benefit in terms of cost or effort it will reduce, but that is something is still in progress. So once CIP is compliant to IC, then it will provide a secure foundation as platform for CIP users. So when CIP uh, and the product is developed on the compliant platform. It uh, basically has its it has basically inherent security capabilities, and uh, of course it will reduce significantly on the effort for IC compliance and certification for CIP users because uh, once this is completed, there will be uh, multiple artifacts which can be reused, uh, which are like. Uh, Currently, we are developing as part of security work group. Uh, multiple documents are already developed. Uh, for example, we completed uh, a threat modeling document. We completed a hardware guideline document for uh, addressing 4-2 requirements. So these are the produced artifacts as part of this activity, plus IEC layer, which are the technical capabilities to be added uh, in uh, ESR CIP core. So, from this compliance, CIP users uh, will immensely benefit once this is completed. And uh, on top of this, CIP users can add their uh, product specific capabilities. And of course, uh, CIP users uh, will have the choice to suggest to CIP to add additional capabilities or additional packages or whatever. So that can be further uh, discussed within uh, CIP. So yeah, we are almost uh, in the end of the uh, presentation. So we have a CIP booth running. We are certain CIP based uh, softwares, CIP based uh, uh, devices having certain demo. So we invite all the attendees to visit booth and uh, get more information uh, about CIP. And if we uh, just compare CIP with the uh, other uh, uh, distributions, so we can see there are a uh, couple of things which are quite good or quite uh, comparable, where we have a dedicated team of kernel maintainers and we promise to provide the updates up to 10 years, even when uh, the long term support is uh, ended by upstreams. So this is one of the key feature or key objective of CIP because uh, after certain time updates are not available then open source components become vulnerable and they become outdated and obsolete. So to solve this problem uh, CIP started uh, uh, this support 
and then uh, we will have uh, soon IC certified uh, platform which can be further uh, used for end product certification and uh, we are closely monitoring CVs uh, for all the for all the features CIP kernel uses uh, which are basically contributed by uh, CIP members and those CVs are regularly updated uh, to CIP users and this way we keep CIP users up to date and informed and for certain packages uh, there is uh, ELTS support based on the CIP members requirement which is also quite important uh, because again uh, when the support is ended by Apis team it's, uh, it becomes difficult to get any updates and uh, those components becomes outdated and uh, CIP has its own uh, testing work group uh, CIP test uh, work group uh, which is actively testing uh, regular updates on multiple associates uh, with the different uh, architectures and those test results are published to kernel CI and they are available for anyone to look into and that is how this uh, regular software updates then testing on those things uh, keep working and then we have uh, multiple uh, players who support uh, CIP and uh, this is how we can differentiate CIP from other distributions so uh, basically we have uh, these members who are currently uh, CIP members for additional information uh, these are the further links we have CIP mailing list uh, CIP dev where we regularly communicate about uh, CIP issues CVs and other things plus we have a uh, uh, CIP uh, website and uh, there we have uh, further each work group uh, blogs uh, where you can find more information about uh, about these things and uh, most importantly uh, CIP has a huge list of uh, GitLab projects belonging to CIP kernel, CIP core, CIP security, CIP testing there are uh, multiple projects where you can find lots of information uh, useful so that is all about the session any questions sure Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's basically the integration of the LTS uh, RT version with the CIP kernel, which is basically the integration of the LTS kernel with a couple of SOC backports right. uh, to that kernel. Okay. So it's mostly an integration thing and a qualification thing. It's, no, it's not that we solve the trapped RT problem anyway better. Okay. That's not the goal, definitely not. So it's mainly the LTS part. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a merge of that. Yeah, thanks. And the reference system which you have, so which the hardware support that you currently have, is it the reference hardware? Yeah, so we have was uh, like uh, Raspberry Pi, Beagle uh, One Black, and a uh, couple more, plus uh, some CIP member specific hardware are uh, supported by CIP. So we have a list of uh, hardwares uh, in CIP website which are currently supported and there are certain requests uh, by CIP members to add in supported list additional hardwares.
Yeah, so we are targeting level three, uh, but when we had discussion with certification body, uh, so they are saying uh, it depends upon the final uh, final investigation done by certification body. So then accordingly they will uh, provide which level CIP qualifies. So currently the target is to have a uh, security level three. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we can, yeah, please. Do you have to be a member of a CIP to have your classroom there public or something? So you said only members can have a list of hardware there that is supported. So if you're not a member, because I see the list of members are small. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or you are only with members. It's the voting right of accepting a platform of the group as a member. Right. Um, so I would say if, if you propose something and you also propose to work on that, you're almost a member, but we can discuss about it. Uh, but anyway, if, if it's about pushing work towards CIP, um, then it's obviously a privilege of a member to Thanks. Okay, any more questions? Thank you. Thanks for joining.